Hey everybody, this is Jim Grzanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. We're in Stockholm, Sweden uh, at JFocus. Um, and I'm here with David Sims. David, welcome. Hi. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. Um, I'm really having a good time at this conference. It's a really, really cool conference. There's a couple thousand people, 1,800 or so people. Um, and I was told by several people out here from Oracle that I should actually have a conversation with you. So that's why you're here. Um, you're based here in uh, in yep, uh, Stockholm, I, um, and what do you do? I'm a I'm a JVM engineer working in the within the runtime group. So I, I hack code, uh, make sure that we take your bytecodes and and do things with them. Uh, plus a few other things on the side. So I'm really heavily involved in um, Project Valhalla. So the effort to put uh, value types or what we're now calling inline types into the to the uh, JVM. And the, and the JDK and generic specialization. So I, I do a little bit of project leadership there and uh, oh, take some meeting notes. Um, but it actually, it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's a big project with a lot of people. And then on the side of that, I also take care of some site management for our VM office in Stockholm here in München Briggery. It's right in the center of the city here. Did you say that you hack code? I, I, I don't hack code. I might develop code. Uh, no, but I'm just saying because that's it's, you know it's a common expression. You know, I like it. I just right. so I think in actually in Project Valhalla's case, yes, because we do prototyping, a lot of prototyping, and a lot of throwaway code. So you know, not everything that you do is going to turn into production, and and definitely rapid prototyping is is a you know we need to test different different theories, different strategies and not all of that is production code so I do hack a lot of code yes that's just the, just a part of the process of yeah. development right and I just liked how you described it that way because very few people actually would and I just liked it that was okay. excellent <laughs> um, so okay so um, why is that project important it's it's important because we're trying to drag Java well not drag, we're trying to <laughs> we're trying to keep Java relevant. And you know, back in the back in the nineties when Java was, you know, first taking off, um, hardware was very different then. Like yeah, I mean, execution of, of instructions, the number of cycles spent actually doing arithmetic compared to fetching memory was kind of constant. It was very slow. But nowadays, when pipelines are very complex, we can execute many instructions, but we still have memory fetching as a really large bottleneck. And Java has a lot of pointers in it. All the object references need to be fetched. And the more pointers you have in your, in your program, the, the less data locality you have. And data locality is costing us a, a lot nowadays. So even with prefetching and, and different GC strategies, we, we still need to improve our data layout. So, so things like value types or inline types are going to help place your da data in line, uh, flattened in with, with objects or in arrays, and keep your, keep your data closer to, to your actual logic. And then on top of that, you know, we look at, look at our collections. Those are really heavily used for, for most people. Um, you, know, you rely on collections for, for so much, and they are completely object reference based. You know, the, we, generics, it, when they were first introduced, it's just a language thing. The VM doesn't really know about them. Everything is an object reference, and that doesn't fit with the story that we're trying to, to create with, with the data layout. So we're, there's a large effort to, to be able to do things like a list of int or a list of my value type and keep the data there really flat as well. Um, so basically efficiency um, and performance. And how long has this project been going on? <laughs> quite, a, quite a long time. It depends on who you talk to. Actively, I've been working on it for about five years. Um, there are other people that have had this as a, as a thought experiment for the last sort of eight years, and the architects have certainly been thinking a, a lot longer about it. It's really interesting you mentioned that because one of the things I'm interested in just you know, personally is how engineers really solve very, very difficult problems over the long term. I mean, you have to go very deep, a lot of analysis, a lot of trial and error. Uh, a lot of things that come out of the labs, you know, it takes years and years and years of, you know, of, of you know, development. I'm wondering how a long-term project like that mixes with the new release model of Java where things are cadenced out every six months. Does that have any effect on things? Yes and no. I, I think along with the, the release model, uh, internally we've certainly focused a lot more on things like continuous integration and continuous delivery. And we've simplified our 
uh, repository structure to a point where we're in a situation where there, uh, there exists a mainline, but we have a lot of test infrastructure there for delivering these quicker releases, and we needed the test infrastructure to be really flexible, really nimble, and we can still use that test infrastructure on projects, not, not just the final release. So any developer within the JPG group can issue all 1.2 million tests on their patch if they think that it requires that amount of testing. 1.2 million tests about for each release. Um, I'm not sure what it is in terms of machine hours, but it's a lot. Um, the point is that I can work with mainline code, keep my project up to date, and when I'm ready to put that project into production, it has the same quality that any release has. And part of that is, is a side effect of the quicker release cadence required better infrastructure. Interesting, interesting, okay. So let's switch gears here and talk about this conference. Uh, do you come to this conference every year? I mean, it's local for you. <laughs> I am local, and yes, I, I do come when, uh, when people want me to. No, I've, I've been here, f I think, for the last three or four years straight. Um, we always have a booth here. Um, Matthias Carlson, who organizes the conference, is always keen to, to have some lunch and talk about what's going on. Um, and I'm also deeply involved with the, uh, inside the conference during the workshop day, there's something called the VM Summit, and that's a very peculiar little part of the conference that is very specific to, to VM technology, very low level kind of thing. And that is a, for people in our office, that's a must attend. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Matthias had me stream those. Uh, actually, actually had me uh, stream those sessions live. I thank you for it. It's it's great to have that stream, and I'm I'm amazed to see the number of people watching it and the interest. Huge. The interest in it. Yeah. Uh, on 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 Periscope just now, it's over. over actually, it's over eleven thousand. But I'm going to put the videos out individually on YouTube as well. I already did the first one last night. So you'll have six separate videos of those. Um, and and that, that kind of, that VM Summit thing, there's not really anything like it, except for perhaps JVM, uh, the Java, uh, the Language Summit that we have uh, over in the US every year. That, that would be about the next, the next step up. Yeah. So my, this is my first experience at this event, and it's a very classy event, actually. The food is delicious, the people are friendly, the sessions are high-end, there's a lot of really big, heavyweight Java people here, um, there's a lot of activity. How has this evolved over the last few years, since, since this is my first, but you were here a few years ago? Right, I, I think, you know, if you talk to, to the organizers, you know, this really started as a very local, basic, we're just going to rent a room out, we'll be lucky if we get 100 people, and now this is literally one of the largest Java conferences out there. Yeah, I mean, you see the, the, the talks, the quality of talks, the, the, the quality of, you know, sessions, it, it just keeps getting better, like, it, it is a sort of a snowball effect, a very slow one at, at this point, you know, we've got to a really large size. Um, uh, but I still think it, you still have the kind of Scandinavian sort of feel. Uh, the locals are, are very polite uh, and friendly. Uh, you know, the, the party nights are always good. And peculiar to this conference, they, they always have a theme. And they, it's a little bit of cosplay maybe, a little bit of play acting in the intros. They, they like to have their own flavor, and, and yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you get to other conferences besides this one as a part of your job? It, yes, it, it happens. Uh, I think pretty much every senior developer in our office, we encourage them to speak publicly at, at least once a year, and I'm no exception. Um, and again, like the, the larger conferences and the smaller conferences all have this sense of community, um, the, the willingness to, to talk about Java and to push Java forward. That's, that's a usual, the common theme, I would say. What are your thoughts on the community? Because now we're at, this is the 25th year of this technology. Um, this is a gigantic community, obviously, millions and millions of developers. Um, how are things over the years sort of ebbed and flowed, in your opinion? I've had my heads down in the VM quite a lot, but I've got to say that I've noticed in the last few years the, the amount of activity. We have a couple of user groups here in Stockholm, and they, we invite them in occasionally to use our our offices as a meetup space and I just see the amount of engagement has actually increased a lot over the last few years and I, and I kind of wonder is that due to there are more actors in the game right now we, we are we have more collaboration with the likes of Red Hat and IBM for example and that sort of increases awareness as well so it also gives you know bodes well for the future 
Yeah, I, I definitely I see that. I mean, I look at just internally our own uh, roadmap and the, the projects that are going on, um, you know, compared to uh, the Java 6 days, that we're, we're light years ahead of that. And, and you know, the speed of, of development is just is racing ahead. Well, David, thank you very much for coming by. Appreciate it. Let's end it now before my battery dies on the camera. <laughs> and lunch is being served here out here uh, soon. So thanks a lot. We'll see yes. you next time. Thanks, thanks guys. Bye-bye.